Now, some 340 years ago, a warship called the Gloucester ran aground on a sandbank and its whereabouts were unknown. But now, after a four year search, the wreck has been discovered off the coast of Norfolk. Well, I'm pleased to say I'm joined now by the brothers who discovered the wreck, Lincoln and Julian Barnwell. Lincoln, Julian, good morning to you. Well, quite a discovery. Good morning, Julian. Thanks for having us on the show. It's an amazing two days. It's so great to share the story of everybody. Yes, good so, morning. Uh, it's so to uh, come out now to the to the public. Uh, it's got to feel like a full circle and uh, really enjoying the moment. Go on, then tell us about how you managed to go about founding this thing. Four years in the searching, am I right? Yes, so uh, I'm glad to say uh, we had a fantastic uh, day when we found her and our father was with us, Michael, and a good friend, James Little, and Lincoln had the first dive. So perhaps he'd like to tell you about what he actually saw when he landed on the seabed. Yes, so it all started from a, a good old traditional book um, and I was flicking through the pages one night of this uh, big archive of shipwrecks around the UK, went back and back in time and saw a wreck on uh, 1682, uh, sank in 1682 called the Gloucester. Um, and just saw the word cannon and the future King of England was on board. Picked the phone up that night, called my uh, brother to see if he'd be up for um, go looking for her. I knew he would. Um, and uh, that was our mission. And uh, four years in, um, we found her. I was a uh, lucky one to dive at first, uh, which was just uh, obviously one I shall uh, never forget. It's really impressive. I mean, just tell us um, what kind of depth of water were you guys diving in to find the Gloucester? She's in shallow water, so we have to be a bit careful on, on the depth. But um, the important thing about the site is it's very intact. And um, she sank within 45 minutes. If you listen, they had the royal, the future King of England on there and his royal court. So it was a high status ship. And she sank in the early hours of the morning within 45 minutes. And the site is only like 50 metres by 30 metres. And it's laden with surface artifacts. Uh, we've only just started um, work on it. And we're, we're working with all the right people. And we've got a fantastic team. So there's a lot more work to be done. And we have an exhibition coming up next year in the Norwich Castle. The Norfolk Museum Service uh, um, got a cast uh, the museum have got the exhibition going on for three months. Uh, so we'd have you know tell everybody about the story and the people on board. Yeah, I mean, as we're talking, we're seeing some of the artifacts that have been pulled from the wreck so far. I mean, and you, it ran aground on a sandbank. I know this was 1682 and they didn't have GPS back then, but how did it manage to, to come a, come aground on a sandbank? Do we have any idea about who was in charge? I know there was a future king on board. So um Basically, they pick up, picked up a local pilot from Great Yarmouth, and that's where we are today. And um, he, he was uh, going to navigate through some treacherous sandbanks off the uh, Norfolk coast. And then uh, the Duke, the future king, had a very robust discussion with the pilot and actually chose to choose his, uh, ignore his local advice. And um, he went to bed, and then by the early hours of the morning, whilst everybody's sleeping, unfortunately, he hit a sandbank. And then they smashed the rudder and sprung a leak on the stern and couldn't save the vessel, so they had to abandon the ship. Sadly, there was 130 to maybe 200 souls lost, and we must always remember that. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, that's a, quite a, a large number of people who unfortunately died in this incident. It was a, and just make sure I'm clear on that, it was a disagreement between the king and the, and the local pilot as to which, how they should navigate through the sandbanks. That's absolutely right. And uh, this was witnessed by a lot of his royal court. Uh, we had John Churchill on there, the first Duke of Marlborough, and um, our historians uh, from the University of East Anglia believe this was the start of losing faith in, in uh, James II and questioning his dis decision making. Um, and that obviously had a knock on effect. And this is a classic what if story. You know, if the Duke had died or even John Churchill, we wouldn't have Winston Churchill. So it's fascinating assets to you know, this particular wreck site. Great history story. Yeah, absolutely right. An amazing story, a great discovery. Uh, Lincoln, uh, Julian, thank you so much for that. Um, just quickly, it, you're not going to try and bring this thing up and put it on display, are you? That's gonna, it's going to stay beneath the waves. We've got so much more work to do. There's many seasons <laughs> and we'll be led by the archaeological work. Uh, we've got yeah. a brilliant team working with us. So whatever's at risk, we'll decide. Okay. But um, there's substantial wreckage, but there's no plans for that at the moment. Sure thing. All right, Lincoln, Julian, thank you so much for that. An amazing discovery. I appreciate your time. And a lovely looking day there in Great Yarmouth. Enjoy the sun.